When I was a child, well, a smaller one than I am now, I remember sitting with my brother in our cramped shared bedroom and watching VHS tapes off a bulky, boxy, black TV that had a fizzing force field of static that protected the screen whenever we first turned it on. We'd sit in the dark, hopping from tape to tape, marathoning these relics of a former decade over and over again because our parents really couldn't afford anything else. This is in the mid-2000s where, by now, VHS was going quickly out of fashion, and as a result, they were cheap and easy to find, so it's what we got. And I'm glad it was, because amongst the likes of Mr. Blobby, Pingu, Bagpuss, and Watch With Mother, yes, I really grew up with that, there was one favourite of the bunch that I'd instinctively return to time and time again, for its vivid colours, wondrous world building, imagination, and warm voiced narrator, not forgetting its central character, whom I loved so deeply that 20 years later, I'd make a pilgrimage to meet in person. And by now, I think you know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm a very friendly lion called Parsley. I am always very glad to see you, Abe. But please don't shout or speak to me too harshly, because I'm not particularly brave. On the 12th of February 1968, on a popular BBC programme called Watch With Mother, a new series of stories titled The Herbs was about to debut. Created and written by Michael Bond, who's perhaps most famous for bringing us Paddington Bear, this new series was set in a mystical place named The Herb Garden, where all of its inhabitants are named after a wide variety of different herbs. As the programme came onto viewers' screens for the first time, they were treated to a now instantly recognisable theme, followed by the comforting, refined voice of Gordon Rollings. Do you know what a herb is? Parsley is a herb. Basil is a herb too. So is rosemary. As with every episode to follow, Rollings primes those watching by softly introducing the characters featuring in the programme and subtly lets us in on what might be going on in the garden today. Parsley is a lion, and lions have their appearances to keep up. Sage, the owl, was upset as well, in more ways than one. When Parsley got his tail back, Sage had his nest blown out of the tree where he lives, and not even Sir Basil, Lady Rosemary, Bailey, the odd job man, Dill the dog, or even Constable Knapweed could get it back. Cutting to an imposing yet intriguing wooden garden door, he tells us that the garden can only be accessed by saying the magic word, Herbidacious. And with a flutter of strings, we're whisked inside the lush green garden for a story. It's here that our characters introduce themselves, one by one as they enter, with a short, snappy and distinctively individual sounding song for each of them. I'm a very friendly lion called Parsley. But there's more than just Parsley, like Sir Basil, the self-proclaimed king of the herbs, and Lady Rosemary. There's Dill the dog, Sage the owl, Bayleaf the gardener, Constable Knapweed, and many, many more. As the episodes play out, we notice that all these characters talk, each and every one being voiced by the talented narrator, Gordon Rollings. While you can definitely tell that all the voices are done by one guy, he changes his accent, tone and personality so well in the blink of an eye that you can easily believe they're all separate people. However, Parsley the Lion and Dill the Dog don't speak a word. They only use actions and occasional animal sounds to get their intent across. But while you may think that this is a disadvantage, it's later revealed that Parsley is the only one who can hear the narrator and, more impressively, see us. There he goes, waving again. Always waving. Can't see anything. So, that begs the question, 
Does he know their world is a lie? Does he know that all his friends, including himself, are just puppets simply spouting the words of this omnipotent force that just drops in whenever he bloody well likes? Eh, probably not. <laughs> As the series progresses, we don't just get to know the characters more, but we explore the colourful and beautifully crafted world of the herb garden itself. Everything from the delicate structure of the glass house to the coloured paper trees with each and every leaf hand cut with great precision and care. The background sets for this show are some of the most wonderfully crafted in all of children's television. Even in black and white. It would have been so insanely easy to get some boring, pre-done background and put a few bushes in the foreground for basic depth. But no! They went the whole hog on this thing and made every bush, plant, tree, leaf and cracked cobbled pathway to make this world feel real. And it really pays off. There's even a working bell tower. Do you see how cool this is now? As each episode ends, we always somehow return to Parsley so he can wave us goodbye. We fly backwards through the garden door, and the theme plays us out. These are simple, fun, and very fluidly animated tales that garnered the show a dedicated viewership, and are still undeniably recognisable today. But there's just... one... tiny problem. There were only 13 episodes made! Yeah, not like two seasons of 13 episodes, no, no, no! Just 13 episodes, and that's your lot. What? What? Why? All the puppets, all the sets, all the decorations, all that work! 13 episodes?! Naturally, though, the success of the show and the love for these characters was too strong to ignore, and thankfully the BBC ordered a sequel show, bringing us the series that this video is really about, the 32-episode masterpiece that is... The Adventures of Parsley. This is the show that I had on VHS when I was about three years old. It was my first introduction to these characters, and whilst each episode only lasts about five or so minutes, Michael Bond and director Ivor Wood do a lot in those five minutes. The Adventures of Parsley, naturally, centres around our favourite friendly lion and his often incompetent, hyperactive best friend, Dill the Dog. The stories are even more basic this time, but are surprisingly wordy and engaging. Oh, yeah, unlike in The Herbs, Parsley and Dill actually talk in this version. Number 31, said Dill. I've called it White Cat in a Snowstorm. Do you like it? Uh, well, yes, and then again, no. It has length and uh, breadth and... Uh... It's for sale, said Dill hopefully. Oh, in that case... I definitely don't like it. So, yeah, Parsley is definitely the best part about this show. Um, the situation and subject matter don't matter, really, all that much. Uh, what you're here for is Parsley's infectiously funny, very cynical humour, but also light-hearted bouts of random inspiration. Marvellous! Oh, I can see it all. We'll be famous. Our name in lights, golden disc, sitting here beneath the tree of knowledge. Hiding behind the tree of idleness, more like. I've been here over two hours, and I haven't had a raise. Hard luck. Do you like my picture? Isn't science wonderful? I could watch it all day, couldn't you? The answer to all those questions is no, yes, and no a thousand times no. Circuits and bumps. I don't like the sound of that very much. What about my guarantee? I'm afraid it expired two minutes ago. Did Sir Isaac Newton have all this trouble when he invented the apple? This garden lion wakes up every day trying to do something fresh and new, only for Dill to somehow hinder more than help his plans. But it's not done like that all the time. It's not tacky slapstick comedy with a straight man and a stooge, because both have equal time to be silly in their own right, but it's written and executed in a way that's played straight, making this all the more fun to watch as an adult. I mean, I had no idea what was going on in the quiz episode, but I knew that something there was rigged. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Double Your Score, or would you mind repeating the question? 
Parsley just asks the most Alice in Wonderland-esque questions with nonsensical logic, giving Dill extra points and multiple chances just to give a middle finger to Her Majesty's constabulary. What is two and two? Dill, are you buying or selling? A very good point. In fact, ten very good points, which puts you in the lead. What's three and three? Constable Napweed? Six. Wrong, I'm afraid. Dill? Thirty-three. Very good. What's four and four? Mr. Bailey? Ah, if three and three be thirty-three, then four and four must be forty-four. I'm sorry, that doesn't follow at all. Bonus marks to Dill, giving him a grand total of 640. You need to have his head examined. In all seriousness, this show is great. Even better once you've grown up and get all of the jokes. The Herbs had bits and pieces of humour for adults, in the intelligent way, not in the naughty way. But The Adventures of Parsley makes it abundantly clear that its supposed target audience aren't going to get all the jokes. Though it never steps too far into complex humour, it's just mature enough to be appreciated by those watching in the background. Especially for those of you out there who oh, I don't know, buy a vintage vehicle without truly considering how much it's going to cost to restore. Ready? Ready? Go! But I don't know anyone like that, so it's fine! The Adventures of Parsley ran from April 1970 to the February of 1971, and seemed to fuel the interest in the show even more. But... Unfortunately, that is where the story comes to a halt. At least in terms of television. Michael Bond, creator of the show, explained that although The Herbs was immensely popular, this was his first introduction to the world of merchandising, and he didn't want to rely on that factor solely to produce the show. As a result, the episodes took a long time to recover their cost, and very little in the way of parsley merchandise was ever made. Hence why, when I was about 16, I made this in my textiles class in secondary school. <laughs> a full-blown DIY parsley toy. The story may have effectively ended at Parsley's final Good Night Everyone back in 1971, but the show and its characters have carved out a place in history for themselves. There have since been VHS and DVD releases, an LP, books, a rare dinky toy, and even a full-blown award-winning display using real flowers and plants, paying tribute to the herbs and some of its characters. This was done back in 2013 by the City of Bath's Parks Department, and having lived near that city all my life, I'm gutted I never saw it. I consider myself Parsley's number one fan, okay? And having this display on my doorstep when I was 13, I should have known about it. And no, I had no idea until just recently. My boyfriend Jokes found this out from an archive site for everything related to the herbs and the adventures of Parsley, which has been linked below. The site features the most comprehensive collection of information on the two series I've ever seen, and whoever spent their time writing all this up gets my full respect and admiration. The archival work done here is so thorough and well presented, it's absolutely essential, a gold mine to preserving this history. But enough about the history. You've sat here all this time for one thing, and one thing only. So, we've travelled two and a half hours, or, well, approximately two and a half hours, in order to get here, a nice car park in the middle of nowhere. No, uh, we've travelled two and a half hours from Bath to get to the RHS here in... What's the name of it? Wistley. Or, what, Wesley? Wistley. Wistley? It's a place. I don't know, flash it up on screen here. So the RHS in a place, uh, the Royal Horticultural Society, they're putting on this exhibition called, uh, what is it, Growing Up in the Garden? I think so, yeah. Uh, Growing Up in the Garden, which is just kind of uh, exploring how kids have grown up in their back gardens and uh, the way that culture has changed. Of course, we're only here to see one thing. We've travelled two and a half hours not to see a bunch of plants, but to see Parsley the Lion, because they've also got the original puppets from the Herbs TV series. So we're actually going to be able to see my favourite childhood uh, 
a, you know, character. So we're here, suited up and ready to go and see Parsley and the rest of the cast from the Herbs TV series. So they only used one puppet in the show, both the Herbs and the Adventures of Parsley, it is believed. So the puppets we're going to see today are from both the Herbs and the sequel show. My personal favourite, the Adventures of Parsley. So really excited to be here. A piece of 1970s, late 60s history is uh, just beyond those gates. So let's go! So we've just found out that Parsley is in this wonderful building behind here. Uh, the wonderful lady on the um, on the desk was just so nice. She was called Hillary. So hi, Hillary, if you're watching. Um, and we said to her, "We've just come here for Parsley. The gardens are beautiful too, but we've just come here to see Parsley the lion." And she just she cracked up at that. She thought that was fantastic. So uh, you ready to go in? Yes. Okay. The two biggest fans in the world. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, we're here to see Parsley the Lion. <laughs> oh, well, that's amazing that somebody knows that it's there. I think we'll find it there by accident. Well, we dra we travelled two and a half hours today just to see the herbs. I'm sure the rest of the gardens are beautiful, and yeah, we'll look at those too. See. Yeah, we're huge seventies fanatics, and he's my favourite <laughs> TV character of all time. Yeah. So, you know, Do you think they're the actual puppets because they come from yeah. the the. Um, Creators' wives, I think, to, has led them to the exhibition. So yeah. we think they must be, but they're, they're fascinating. All of them are. I like the little chives as well. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So they're in there. Thank you very much. What's your name, sir? John. John Infinity. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know. Thank you so much, guys. There it is. Way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. <gasps> oh, he's beautiful. Oh my god, oh my god, I love it. <laughs> so, I'm just letting him at the moment. This is so cool, I love it. in much better condition than I thought he was going to be. Oh my god. Oh, look at that. It's amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh my god. This is so weird. This is so, so weird. So here we are in front of the real deal. Parsley, dill, and of course above, sage. Didn't know that sage was considered one of the main trio of characters. I thought it was Dylan Parsley in the original, just about, or just Parsley, but no, apparently Sage was also considered a leading member of the show. All the others were kind of more background and extras, so it's quite interesting. Um, a little bit of information down here on all the different characters. Parsley comes at number six, when he should be at number one. Um, but yeah, just absolutely incredible to see him in real life. He's far bigger than I thought he was going to be. Jokes and I were talking uh, on the way up here, thinking, how big are they actually? Because of course they needed to be manoeuvred for the show, but um, we thought, oh, they've got to be so small because everything's made out of paper, but he's way bigger. Um, I'd say he stands at about seven, maybe to nine inches in height. Um, looking at him here, it's quite incredible, really. Also, his face is made of plastic. I thought it would have been made of clay or felt, but it's actually made of plastic, which is amazing. Some kind of vinyl, rubbery, shiny sort of plastic. Amazing. Quite incredible to actually be here in front of my childhood. The amazing thing to me is that just to think that I've been watching these things on VHS and so on, I've been watching these puppets for years, and yet now it's physically there, you know, staring me in the face. Quite incredible. Needless to reiterate, I was insanely happy, and it completely made up for the almost three-hour drive to Wisely. Seeing the cast up close after years of looking at them through fuzzy VHS static and aged footage was something I never thought I'd get the chance to do. These little 
amalgamations of handcrafted plastic, wood, felt and paper were characters I'd known my entire life, but this was their first knowledge of me. Once again, these puppets show how intensely detailed yet simplistic everything on that program was. It's amazing to think that a lot of the characters' hair was made out of paper. Looking at them now, 50 years on, they stand as a testament to Ivor Wood's impeccable craftsmanship, surviving almost half a century in storage and several years of screen use. And I know, I'm just gawking over some bits of cardboard. Bits of cardboard? I'll have you know these bits of cardboard happen to be works of art. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, Dill. But it is crucial to appreciate just how rare an opportunity like this is. The puppets were found by pure chance a few years ago after Michael Bond's copyright holders were having a massive clear-out. As the BBC and other broadcasters always used to destroy their tapes and TV show sets after they were used, it was a wonder that these weren't thrown out or done away with somehow. The fate of Constable Knapweed, Bayleaf the Gardener, Pishana Bedi, and Belladonna the Witch might have been just that, as they weren't present with the rest of the cast. But to have my favourite childhood character right in front of me? made me tear up later in the day because of just how much I appreciated the history right in front of me. The first and only time the herbs had been on display was back in 2017, when they were first discovered, and I didn't know the puppets had survived until researching for this video. To be there in person, connecting with something so warm and comforting from my early childhood was a big deal on its own. The fact that this was the only other time they had come on display in six years meant even more. Needless to say, this video is just one big love letter of appreciation to a crucial part of my growing up, which may have gone so far as to influence the way I speak today. My wordiness and love of the English language, even my somewhat posh voice, could all be traced back to the VHS tapes I grew up with. The media we watch as children has a dramatic impact on the way that we act, think, and perceive the world. Growing up with 1970s TV shows in the 2000s, I was lucky enough to be caught in a kind of time warp, almost. We didn't have any technology to play with, so that made what we did have all the more special. I've dedicated my entire life to an era I never even witnessed. A point in time, no matter how much I collect and research, I'll never truly experience. But thankfully, for a brief moment in time, with no knowledge of what other kids were watching in comparison, I got a taste of what I'd later dedicate my entire life to, not knowing how important and influential these memories would be. So yes, I am completely insane and this is all very poetic. But hopefully now you can see why finding Parsley was such a big deal to me, and why, when you get the chance, it's important to slow down and take in just what makes you, you. The more you can trace back, the more you understand about yourself, and often this teaches you more going forward. Coming face to face with some of my core history was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And all this started with one very friendly lion. So, what are you going to learn during your time? Well, firstly, and rather obviously, you will be taught all about plants and how to identify them. Then, we will teach you about all the pests and diseases that can damage those plants. And finally, we'll also be taught, uh, apparently, how to build an aeroplane out of carpet. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>